In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a quick and simple main menu for your game. I'm Aramis. Let's get into it. Create a new scene. We'll call this our menu scene. We'll come in here. This is just a 2D scene. And we'll just call this main menu for the sake of argument. And the very first thing we're going to do is come in here and create a color rect. This is just going to be a placeholder for the background. You could also use an image, which I'll be doing off screen later just to make this look a, bit, a little bit prettier. But for now, let's just create a nice kind of darkish blue for a good placeholder. The next thing we're going to do is create a margin container. The margin container we're going to use is to keep things both in the center and kind of on the top and bottom. And we can use that to manipulate using these theme overrides over here in the constant section. So we'll get there in a little bit. For now, if you click on the snap and the grid, I find this is very useful when you're doing UI stuff to make the things the right size. Within here, we're going to create a VBox container. This allows us to vertically manipulate where pieces are within. We'll create a label for our title. And our title here will go title here. All right. So now that we have the title, we want the title to be able to take up as much um, space as it possibly can on the screen. So we're going to come down to size flags and check both the expand on the horizontal and then fill and expand on the uh, vertical side. So you can see now it takes up the whole space. The last little thing we're going to do here is create this to be in the center and then change the align, the V align to be the center here. So now we're right in the middle. Running F6, you can see what we have is a very small title in the middle. So if we come down over into, uh, I'm gonna yoink myself over here. So if we come down into our label and go down into the theme overrides under fonts, we can create a new font here. So we're gonna create a new dynamic font, click into that and then expand out font. I went onto Google and got out this font myself. You can easily do that. They're very quick and easy to download and you just get the .ttf file, drop it into your file, and then you can click and drag and put it into font data. Under settings, you can save the size you want. Let's do 125 for our title and realize that we did not spell title correctly. I am a programmer, not a English major. All right, well, now, th now that we have this piece, we're going to create another VBox container. And this one's actually gonna hold the buttons. So in this situation, you can see the label takes up so much space and then the VBox is just taking up this little space down here. So the way we can fix that is again, going to these size flags and telling this VBox container, hey, expand to the, the maximum size you can in this given space here. And now it's doing that, which is great. So we'll come down, we'll create another margin container. This margin container is going to be responsible for holding the button. So we'll just immediately create a button to house that as well. That's awesome. So our button now doesn't take up as much space. Again, coming down to the size flags, if we expand these both out and do the same thing for our margin container here, where we go expand and expand. Now you can see that it takes up this whole space that we care about. I'm gonna come to this color rect and just make sure that that is the exact same size of the screen so it doesn't uh, look a little bit funny here as we're, as we're doing this. All right, so coming back down to the button, we can put in the text here. We'll call this new game. The same sort of thing, we're gonna come down and click on the theme overrides, go down into font, and we're gonna create another dynamic font following the same sort of process we did before. We'll drag this over, and then we will set our font size to be, let's call it 75. So a little bit smaller than that, uh, than the title here, but we will have our new game button be a little bit smaller so that the title really stands out, the first thing that you get their eye is drawn to, and then they'll see their options below. So this button looks really ugly, so how do we, how do we change that? We come into theme overrides again, and we have all these different styles we can do. So we'll set up a normal first. We're gonna do a style box flat. Clicking into the style box flat, you can come to the background color. Let's just make this black. And then we're going to set the alpha to 100 so that you can still see the background. If you had an image, you can see those textures and stuff like that. But it's just gonna darken it slightly to see that, hey, this is a button, hey, this is clickable. 
The other thing we're going to do is we're going to come down and add a corner radius. This will just give it a subtle kind of corner around the outside. You can see that a little bit here. Maybe especially if I turn that off, you can see that there's a little bit of a corner there, which is exactly what we're going for. Now we're going to have to do some other pieces here, which is create one for when we hover over the button. We want it to be a little more tactile so that they can see, hey, this is a clickable button. We'll create another flat box there and then come down and make that black. So our alpha was 100 before. We want to darken it a little bit, so we'll go 125. Come down to the corner radiuses again and do five for all of these. We don't want it to look funny when it changes. And then the last little bit we'll do is when it's pressed, we want to have another flat box, same sort of thing coming, making it dark. And we'll make this even darker. So we'll call this uh, 175 when it's clicked. Uh, same sort of thing, come down to the corner radius of five for all of these pieces. And then if we click F6 to run this local scene, you can see when we hover over, it gets a little bit darker. And when we click, it gets even darker than that. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. Now, one thing that I don't want is this little blue outline that's focused. For my purposes, I do not want a focus to be happening, but in your project, if you did, you could create another style box for focus here. But to easily just disable focusing at all, we can come and click on to none in the mode section under focus. So now when we run it again and do this hover and clicking, you can see the focus doesn't happen and we kind of just get this very smooth, almost an animation, but not quite. What else we want to do here? We want to bring in these sides of the buttons so that they're not so unwieldy and they're not so large. So we can come in to the margin container, go to theme overrides, constants, and then we can change the margin on either side. Let's do 50 on the right and 50 on the left. Now we're not gonna do anything in the actual uh, top and bottom. We can use the VBox container to do that. Uh, but before we do that, let's create some new buttons. We'll create two new buttons and then we will change the text. We'll call this text options and we'll call this one maybe like a uh, made, made by. So you can give yourself credit in that portion there. Uh, so what else we're going to do here is we're going to come into the VBox container, go down to theme overrides, and just do some separation between these. So let's do 20. So now we see it just took care of it for us right there where we have this space in between. Um, the last little bit we're going to do is do the actual margin for the entire the entire scene here. So if we collapse it, you can see this is the the whole set of all these different nodes beneath here, including the title and all these buttons. So we're going to come down into the theme overrides. And on the right side, we'll call it 200. And on the left side, we'll call it 200. Top, let's do like 100, bring that down a little bit. And the bottom, we'll call it 150. So that actually looks a little bit squished in my opinion. So let's do the top maybe closer to 75. Uh, and maybe the bottom, we'll call it uh, 100. Running that now, you can see when we come, we get to hover over these nicely, and you can see that it darkens really nicely. The one thing that we need to do, for some reason when you copy over buttons, the focusing setting does not get copied over very well. So we have to come into each button, again, go down to focus, set it to none, come down to the next button, click on the focus and set that uh, to none as well. So now when we run it, we can see we hover over these nicely and you click them and you get that. The last little bit of cleanup before we create some functionality is I would like to rename my buttons so that they're more descriptive when it comes time to do coding. So we'll call this button new game button. We'll call this next one options button. I know I'm super creative. And this last one we'll call made, made by button. Now that we have these names, we can finally create our script. So we'll come up to our, our main root node here and click on the little plus to create a new script. We can call it menu, which is fine. And then we're going to create an export variable called main game scene. This will be a packed scene. So what this goal of this is gonna to be to do is to allow us to come out here and just plop in the scene that we care about to go to for the main the main game. So in my game that is called main scene, so we'll just drag that up there. Now we're going to go and click on the but the new game button, come up to the node under signals, we'll click on button up 
and click on connect. We're gonna connect that to the script we created here. And I'll create a new method for us, which is perfect because all we need to do is call get tree dot uh, change scene. And then we are going to use the main scene here in this pack scene, you can call resource path. And then that is going to get out the path for free without having to hard code any value. So if you ever move this scene around like that, you just have to make sure that this export variable is set so that it knows what scene to move to. So now when we run it clicking F6 and we come down here and click on new game, it will create the new game for us.